So we are going to be talking about exponential versus linear functions today. This is something we've kind of been doing all unit anyways. Um, but we're going to really actually discuss what you guys need to write down and everything for it. Again, so this is going to be kind of review as we're going through it, just to remind you guys of how to determine something's exponential and how to determine something's linear so that when we're comparing, you can determine the right thing. The EOC has a lot of questions where it compares the functions you learn. It will have quadratic and absolute value as well on it once we get to those functions, okay? So, just so you are aware. So, I can compare properties of two functions when represented in different ways, and I can determine if a given represent representation models a linear or exponential function. All right, so let's just kind of go through this, and then you'll get your homework. So, how to identify an exponential or linear from a table? So... All right, so from there, we have exponential decay. How do you know if something is exponential decay? How do you know if something is exponential decay? Mackenzie? Your B value is between 0 and 1. So when, but when x is positive, because you still have to make x positive first, your b value is between 0 and 1. Your decay factor is between 0 and 1. So Spencer, what's my b value in y equals 2 times 0.5 to the x? And is that be yeah, and is that between 0 and 1? Yes, it is. It is between 0 and 1. Vivian, what's my b value in the next one? And is that between 0 and 1? Yes, it is. 0 is less than 2 thirds, and 2 thirds is less than 1, so it's between that. What is my B value? Who can tell me my B value in the last one? Jenny. It's actually 1 half, because remember, we have to change the X value to a positive, which is a reciprocal. So that is between 0 and 1. 0 is less than 1 half, which is less than 1. All right, look at those and see if you know how to determine if it's growth or decay from the equation. When you're ready, I will. You can flip, and then we will look at the lines. All right, let's look at lines. How do you identify if an, a line, if it's a line from the equation, then we're going to determine what our slope is. So who can tell me how I know if something is a line from an equation? First, let's say if it's a line and then also if it is positive. So how do I know? I'm going to go back to the last slide real quick. Can you guys add a note to this? If it's exponential, if it's exponential, the variable is the exponent. So that's very important you realize this. So if it's exponential, the variable is the exponent. So let's add that to there. So x is my exponent. So that's how you know it's exponential in the first place, and then you can determine if it's growth okay, from there. Yes, Jenny? Okay, we'll get back to that. You can answer that in a second. 
I just forgot that that would be very important to know. All right, before you answer the positive linear, how can we tell if something's linear from an equation just to start off? How do you know if something's linear from an equation? What do you look for? Alexis? It has a constant rate of change, constant rate of change but sometimes that's hard to tell even when there's other things in there. So what's another way? So if there's no exponents, other than one, and if it's in one of the three forms, which is it's about I think Alexis was trying to get at too with the constant rate of change thing too. So if it's in y equals mx plus b, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, or if it's in standard form. So those are how you can tell if it is linear just by looking at the equation. So go ahead and get that copy down, and then um, Jenny, you can tell me how it's a positive linear, but let's give people some time to write some stuff down. All right, Jenny, how do you know if something's a positive linear? If slope is positive. So if you're thinking y equals mx plus b, m is your slope. So remember, your slope is the b value, or m value, sorry, in y equals mx plus b. Carly, what's my n value in y equals x? 1. You can tell it's linear, there's no exponents, so m is my slope, is that positive? Yeah. Can you determine your slope in the second equation there, y minus 2 equals 2 times x plus 5? Jill, do you know what your slope is from that equation there? It is 2. Remember, point slope form does have the slope. That's why it's called point slope. So 2 is your slope. This 2, not the other one. Um, and it's in point slope form, so that's one reason why it's linear. The other one is there's no exponents other than 1. So m equals 2, which is positive. Hannah, can I see my slope in 2x minus 3y equals 6? No. no, that's standard form. So what are we going to have to do to get it into? Uh, yeah. We're going to have to solve here to get it into slope-intercept form to determine our slope. And then what? Uh, and then two negatives make a positive. So this is really y equals two-thirds x minus two. So Hannah, what is my slope? And that is still positive, right? Okay, Avery, how do I know something's a negative linear? if the slope is negative. Okay, Alexis, what is my slope in y equals negative x? What'd you say? It's not 1, it's negative 1, which is negative, so that makes sense why it's a negative linear. There's no exponents, and it has a slope of negative 1.
Can I see my M value, Madison, in the next one? Negative 2, very good. So negative 2, because it's in point slope form, is my slope, and that is negative. Okay, Kelly Cavanaugh. 2x plus 3y equals 6. Can I see my slope? No. Standard form does not allow you to see your slope, so what do I have to do? You have to solve for y. Okay, so tell me what to do. Um, subtract 2x from this side. Then what? Divide everything by 3. <coughs> so what's my m value, Kelly? Um, negative 2 thirds. So that is negative. Okay, questions on how to determine linear exponential from equations. We understand that. If so, we'll start looking at the graphs. And I think then we're done. Maybe. We have a little recap slide, but I probably won't do it. from a graph? Just how can you tell something's exponential from the front just by looking at a graph? What do you look for? Jenny? I mean, that happens in lines, too, so we have to be careful there. Alexis? Yeah, you look for a J-shaped curve, right? Or a backwards J-shaped curve. So then we're going to have to get more specific about that when it comes to exponential growth and decay. Okay. So, first of all, you can tell that this is exponential by what? How can you tell this is exponential growth by? Mm -hmm. Joe? It starts out, uh, it starts, it goes up. Goes upward in a what? So it's increasing, goes upwards, and what kind of, it, what is it? It's not, because those words could also mean a line. So be a little bit more specific about the shape goes upward in a J shape. Okay, who can tell me what the growth factor is? So I put some points on there. Who can tell me what the growth factor is? What are we multiplying our Y values by each time? Kaylin, what's my growth factor? My points are 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. It's going multiplying by 2, right? So the growth factor is times 2 because you are multiplying by 2 each time.
2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. Spencer, how can you tell something's exponential decay? What are you looking for there? The backwards J shape. The backwards J shape. So it's decreasing or going down. in a backwards J. So Morgan, what's my decay factor? Mm -hmm. Half of 100 is 50, half of 50 is 25, so it is definitely multiplying by 1 half. All right, questions there? So we have one more slide to do and then I'll be you your homework. I'm not going to do the last one. All right, lastly. How do I identify an exponential or linear from a graph? How can I tell that something is linear on a graph? Katie, what do you look for on a graph if it's linear? You just look for a straight line. The definition of a line is that it's straight, but we're going to overemphasize that by writing it. So that means it has a constant rate of change if it's a straight line. So, Olivia, what makes something a positive linear? Why is that one positive linear? It's increasing from what to what? How do you read it? Perfect. It's increasing from left to right. from left to right you can look I look at it as like a hill are you walking uphill or downhill basically is what you're asking yourself so how can I find the slope of this line what could I do to find the slope of this line Alexis so what did you say I'm sorry I didn't hear you Alexis Alexis I didn't hear you what did you say you said something, I just didn't hear you. Huh? So, what is the slope here? How can I figure this out? It's counting by twos, right? So these are like halfway points here. If you look at it, right? Do you guys see that? So this is going up one over how many? If I go from there to there, how many is it going over? Two. So my slope is a rise over a run, a change in y over change in x. So it's actually 1 over 2. It's kind of hard to see that just because of the halfway point there. So, Jacqueline, how do I know it's a negative linear? Decreases from left to right. And Kelly, go ahead and tell me the slope of this one.
rise 2, go over negative 3, so that would mean that the slope is rise over run. So, a, yeah, and we'd put the negative on top. So, negative 2 thirds is your slope. All right, what questions do you guys have for me?